Oh, this is the Great Johannes podcast. I'm going to be discussing uh, the works of a fellow Dutchman, Mace or Meowis Bayen, who has a uh, who, who has a website on uh, Substack called uh, The Predators versus the People, and he published two articles there that I'm going to read uh, partially, and uh, I want to provide my own thoughts. Basically, he drops mm, uh, a different worldview. He clarifies that there is. Uh, a sort of global elite clique that control most of the world through uh, through their control of capital. And he believes that Russia and China are simply elected by these globalists to become the new leaders of the world. Uh, <clears throat> my immediate problem with this is, well, excuse me, I don't see Europeans submitting to China because there is no cultural appeal. If you think of the reasons why Western white people's culture became so appealing to the world is that our stories, our culture, our fairy tales, for example, uh, have that universal appeal. Um, the Disney movies that you watch, Little Mermaid, Rapunzel, uh, Snow White and so on, all come from uh, German and English and some French culture, but it's mostly German fairy tales, by the way, that were turned into Disney movies. And they won a global appeal because they are globally appealing. They are hum human universally appealing, whereas the opposite isn't true. Can you even name one fairy tale out of China? I can't. Can you name even one fairy tale out of the Muslim world? I can't. Oh, I've heard of the Scheherazade, but that was written before Islam. So that doesn't count. Name name one Islamic fairy tale that has a global appeal. There is none. Name one uh, uh, African fairy tale at all. I can't name any. And this isn't discrimination. This is uh, the fact that our North European culture, uh, in and of itself, won the appeal of the rest of the world. Th the reason they like us uh, is because our culture touches them. But the opposite isn't true. Okay, so I'm going to discuss uh, the the Substack articles by uh, Mace Bayer, a fellow Dutchman. I believe he lives in Costa Rica, but he is from the Netherlands. He's been doing a tour to push his book called The Predators versus the People. I haven't read it yet, but I have read his articles. So I'm going to like go through that and um, give you my own thoughts about all of this. All right, just a minute. I'm going to pop out my comment box so I can see you while I read. All right, here we go. I see some people coming in. So I'm going to publish this episode on my uh, YouTube channel at The Great Johannes as well. So you can review or rewatch it there uh, whenever you feel like it. All right, there's somebody. Oh, there's symbolism used by Islam. Okay. The black flag is the flag of the revolutionaries of the fascists. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. Yada, yada, yada. So already some 500 years ago, the resulting civilizations with hierarchic societies and improved technologies led to globalization. The global trade you know, of bullion, multicolor slaves, spices, and luxury products became the rich trade. This enabled enormous accumulations of capital in Asia, Africa, and Europe. Usury took flight and oligarchies developed. But only Europe became the monster shaper of world history. Usury, by the way, if you don't know what it is, usury is um, like when you pay rent. That is technically usury. Or when you pay taxes is a form of usury. Uh, and it is a way where, say, I lend you money, but you have to pay me. In, you have to pay me like a mortgage is a form of usury. You pay your mortgage plus rent. Right. And it is a way of extracting more money from you than the thing you actually bought. If you want to buy a house with uh, with say you buy a house in the Netherlands and you have cash on hand. Right. You pay three hundred thousand euros. You have a house. But if you need to get a mortgage, what exactly do you end up paying? You end up paying six hundred thousand. You pay twice as much. And basically it is a way of uh, enslaving you financially. So I'm reading this. Uh, article from uh, Mace Bayo is some old uh, old Dutch man never heard of him before so I am a little bit skeptical that's why I'm going to uh, uh, you know try to figure him out so I'm continuing 
Here's why. Around the year 1500 AD, after many failed attempts to control the world by blunt force, an innovative global dom domination project was set up by Venetian Genoese and ex-former Iberian, that means Spanish, Jewish merchants and bankers. He calls them the Galafia, as in uh, the Mafia, but Galafia. I don't know why he chooses this word, but so clear to be clear, he's speaking about Southwest or Southern European, Italian and Spanish Jewish merchants and bankers uh, using their hidden and totalitarian project to run the world as their private farm, farm earth, with us humans as their cattle, the Goyim. Uh, and their trickery was based on shrewd deceit and mobile capital. Uh, and he asks, uh, you're, you're happy that I'm doing a YouTube, yeah. Also doing an Odyssey, yeah, I do have an Odyssey account, but I don't use it. Uh, I think I have something that is supposed to automatically push my videos from YouTube to Odyssey. So it's supposed to be there um, at the Great Johannes or something like that. I, I'll have to look up the, the username. Uh, I'll do that right now for you for a minute. Here, Odyssey. I do have an Odyssey. It's called also at the Great Johannes. Yeah. Um, my YouTube videos should be pushed there. Um, and so these Jews, the Jewish cabal, I'll just call them the cabal. He calls them Galafia. Um, these Jewish people knew that their aim could only be reached covertly in secret through proxies. Not coincidentally, uh, nation states were on the rise in Europe. He's, he's saying that the cabal is behind funding the nation states of Europe. They would even create a new nation state for their globalist project, the United States of America. So far, so good. This is quite interesting, isn't it? Have I ever read their books? I have read some of the Talmud, yes, and I've read the Pentateuch, of course, that's the Old Testament. Uh, but the Book of Zohar by Moses de, Le de Leon is the absolute critical book. Uh, Zohar, by the way, is the region in the Bible where you find the cities Sodom and Gomorrah. And so the Book of Zohar is all about this transgender goat god uh, fusing male with female and so on. It's... Uh, it's what most modern Jews actually believe. They don't believe in the Old Testament. They believe in uh, uh, the book of Zohar, the book of degeneracy, really. So fake, fake sovereign nation states, Galafia's first proxies. In the 15th century, a small group of Genoese bankers accidentally discovered that they could remote control the Spanish empire of the time through mobile capital a fact which hardly any historian has noticed. Galafia, the Jewish cabal, then used this template systematically. It infiltrated, corrupted, and captured the upcoming European nation-states, which they then controlled via usurious central banking, their mobile capital, bribery and investments, and deceit, basically giving people money and getting those people to do what they want, uh, fake democracies, and falsified science and history. In this falsified science and history exactly they falsified our entire reality uh, in this first phase of their domination plan the cabal tasked with tasked and financed these nations to explore and colonize the third world so he's saying that the so-called european colonialism was also actually funded by them by the cabal by the small hats uh, my twitter is uh johannes mkx and telegram is johannes mk By dominating the money system and injecting capital in these captured fake autonomous and fake sovereign nation states, normally impossible projects, could suddenly be carried out. Uh, large scale discoveries and colonizations, revolutions, wars, science, technology, and industry, and what is called development. All right. This ended a long period of slower organic growth. See, so you have to imagine here that humanity was kind of growing very, very slowly in its own innate ways, but the Kabbalists, using fake money, were able to fund large uh, events in human history. All right. Uh, let me turn this on for a moment. If you want to find all my links and also my main homepage is uh, www.jmk.info, my initials.info. 
Um, there you can also find my links. You can subscribe for free to my newsletter or you may also uh, donate if you wish to donate so you can keep me uh, writing and speaking. Thank you for sharing the live. So the fusion between the state, the modern state and capital was the key for their success. I want to explain something about the nation state. Nation, state. Those two words, we use them together, but they mean completely different things. Nation, natio, means people of a shared birth. So nationalism is the politics for people who were born together or who are of similar birth, meaning your people, your ethnic people. So nationalism is tied to ethnicity. The state, of course, is that governing principle that rules over such uh, a people, right? And now with um, globalism, they just make it multinational and multicultural, uh, but all in their economic benefit, right? So I'm clearly an ethno-nationalist and I, I see no wrongdoing whatsoever in people of a shared birth living together and standing together against globalism. We should be a force opposite to globalism. I'll speak more about that later. So by now, all these so-called sovereign nation states have been captured, including Russia, China, North Korea, Korea and Iran. So, yeah, I was also thinking about this, whether or not the BRICS nations, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa and others now Iran, uh, whether or not they're really an, uh, an alternative to the Western rules based order. And actually, no, it's this, it's just the same kind of globalism again. Um, it is also the argument of this author is also that these cabalists with the small hats, they're just using the wealth of the USA now to build their global world order. So they're going to bankrupt the West in order to pay for uh, a global totalitarian matriarchal control system. And so uh, the author continues here on Galafia's hegemonic cycles. In their hierarchic approach, only one leader state controlled Galafia's other subordinate nation states. The first hegemonic cycles were run by Spain, by Holland, the Netherlands and England. Together with France, they also colonized the lands where the future nation state of the USA would be funded. So, yeah, it's interesting to see that uh, what if the United States was indeed a economic project funded by the cabal, the small hats, and it was just founded for that purpose. And then everything else that you heard about, about, you know, freedom and about, you know, the American way and democracy, all of that is a smokescreen, a fakery, a smokescreen full of fakery to deceive you and everybody living there. You were just used as the lackeys for other people's uh, goals. Yeah, you're just used. And so he describes these three cycles that each of these hegemons goes through. So you, so we had Spain, the Netherlands, England, and then the USA for the past 500 years, right? Because you can go back further, of course. Uh, first, a merchant or accumulation phase, often funded by the previous hegemon, then a phase of industrial expansion, and then a final phase, a period of uh, a money cult, basically, a period of financialization dominated by the banking sector by the merchants who have now turned into bankers. Catholic Spain, and this is around the 1500s or so, 1600s, then the greatest empire of the world was sidelined as their hegemon for not being usury and Jew friendly, right? And from the mid, mid 16th century on, Holland and England were then groomed to become the cabal's next Protestant hegemons. Uh, I'm from the south of the Netherlands, which is actually, uh, uh, Catholic, but the north of the Netherlands was Protestant and our political leadership uh, is also Protestant. And so the Reformation for the Dutch, uh, the Dutch War for Independence from Spain from 1560, 1568 to 1648, the Cromwell and the Glorious Revolutions in England, the central banks in Holland and England, who were, that were established in 1609 and 1694, respectively. Uh, and the fake democracies and the East India companies in both were all cabal steered and financed. From the 1830s then, finally, preparations started to make the United States of America their fourth hegemonic proxy. 
and Karl Marx knew about this game of ever stronger hegemonic states, but he focused on class struggle instead. Hmm. And the bankers loved him for it. So, ah, okay. Here you can see, for example, that the way media used to present class struggle was a distraction in the same way that, yeah, Karl Marx was a Jew indeed. His father or grandfather was a, a rabbi from three years. And uh, class struggle. And then, of course, we also have this notion of racism in the USA. The, the Western media keep talking about racism, this, racism, that, which is also a distraction. It is meant to divide people. It is, it is the men, meant to divide the workers to fight against the elites. Although I myself am not going to ally myself with the Africans just to overthrow our elites and then end up having to live with the Africans. No, I think it would be more... Um, I personally favor absolutely an ethno-nationalist revolt, a European ethno-nationalist revolt against globalism. Hi, you're in Ireland and they stole your vote? Yeah, your identity is now an email to claim your heritage, yeah. Yeah, that's how it is. It's th This needs to stop and it will stop. It will stop because uh, you haven't gone extinct yet and you won't go extinct. So the common people, the people of Europe, and there are many different configurations, their diversities and their own languages and so on, we will stand together because we know we are all in it together now. And so the author that I'm quoting here from, he goes on to talk about, uh, um, he believes that perhaps before Columbus, others have already set foot in the, the Americas. That's true, actually. There was actually a German from the 13th century who also arrived to the coast of uh, North America. So it ha it ha And the Vikings, of course. It had been discovered before and maps of this existed. But then Columbus, of course, wanted to find a way to India via the West, and then they ended up finally colonizing the Americas. I always feel I felt I always feel that maybe it's necessary to mention that of the so-called 14 million black men who were enslaved and brought to the Americas, 12 million of those went to Brazil. Only about two or three hundred thousand of them came to the USA. It's it's a total uh, total fraudulent lie to to think that the USA is somehow responsible for slavery when they weren't. But okay. It's just that the blacks who ended up in the, living in the USA were the wealthiest blacks in their own entire history, even today. So they sh should have no reason to complain, but they complain all the time, right? All right, I'm going to go fast forward a little bit because he just, he describes all the revolutions and the nation states and the formation, how the Freemasons and so on and the Kabbalists founded the USA and basically Washington DC bulging with Masonic symbols while printing in trust we God on their coins. Yet Freemasons don't believe in God, but in materialist science. That's true. So see what they do. They it's two sides to a coin, right? They sh the front facing part that they show you is what you want to see. You want to have your religion, your uh, rural life, your families. And the other side is what they really believe, that they don't show you, the side in the shadow. Um, yeah, their occultism, their mechanical engineering. We are being ruled really by people who don't, who on one hand don't believe that they have a mind of their own, who don't have a free will, or definitely don't believe you should have. But I think they personally, the Freemasons personally, do believe in something satanic. All right. I think this is all uh, extremely interesting. Yeah, that basically this small hatted cabal is behind most of our developments. And uh, perhaps we uh, we can finally cut ourselves loose from them as multinationals are now eyeing the booming population market in, in Africa. Maybe they will leave us alone now. Eh? Maybe the, the parasite is looking for a new host and they will decouple from us. But then what then we need leadership the way I see it. We Europeans are at that point in our history where we can finally free ourselves from the small hat Kabbalists from the parasite and finally uh, install our own leadership, which would which in my view should be monarchist. We should have some kind of monarchist Christian Sparta, something like it. Yeah, a moral monarchist Sparta ruled by our own people for our own people. If we can achieve that, this is what we want, you know. So, no, I don't think the USA will survive. The USA will be used 
uh, it will be bankrupted in order to fund the the global world one world government. So that's what they're doing now. Uh, you know, that's maybe why they're attacking the white population of the USA so much with the trans cult and uh, and so on. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, they also have to destroy Europe because if they want to transfer power to China and Russia to build their totalitarian global government, then you can't have a strong Europe because Europe might potentially uh, become most powerful again. They don't want that either. So that's why I think they're flooding Europe with the low IQ arrivals to destroy our to permanently destroy, destroy our populations. What I think there's a solution to it, of course, is what India has done is a caste system. And we're going to see that in Europe. I, I will predict it to you now. Europe will see this century the uh, the rise of a very strong, a steep hierarchical uh, caste system with the mixed race brown people at the bottom. Right. Because I think that's inevitable. How else are we going to survive? You know, it has to be done. So he also talks to so the author I'm reading from. He also talks about uh, the staged financial crisis of the 1930s, uh, Roosevelt's New Deal and so on. Uh, and they're working toward, oh, the Great Reset is their end game. OK. Uh, right. So after World War II, the US lived a short golden era during which it completed its Galafia or its Kabbalist task of bringing all nation states, including over 100 now independent former European colonies, under control of its own uniform, uh, informal empire, the US empire, via its subordinate elites. Much of it was done under the banner of the United Nations, which the Rockefeller set up. Yeah. So the United Nations, you know how they found why they did that? Uh, I had an interview about this with, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, Daniel Natal of the Daniel Natal show and he explained this to me that after World War II Great Britain was bankrupt and they needed a way to write off their bankruptcy basically and that's how they funded the United Nations so they could then offload their uh, uh, their debt to the world and that's what they did yeah there's a video on his channel uh, the Daniel Natal show I'll, uh, I'll write this down here Daniel Natal show I did two interviews with him, so you can uh, you can have a look at those ones there. So just as the alleged Jewish safe haven in Palestine, Israel, the exceptional USA became another Kabbalist war state based on the principle of genocide, according to Noam Chomsky. Or as a former US president, Jimmy Carter said, the USA is the most warlike nation in the history of the world. Yeah, it's probably true, right? Yeah, we're seeing the end of the USA, like I said, but it's deliberate unless, say, I don't know, white nationalists in the USA actually take over and, and basically drive out the Jews and the Kabbalists and, and basically all those degenerates who, who command your government now. Uh, otherwise, if you don't, if you don't take over from within, then they're just going to bankrupt you to fund their uh, world governments. Yeah. So the multipolar world order that we hear about, they tell us this is a, a dangerous alternative to the rules based order of the USA. We can't allow the USA to fall because then Russia and China and their multipolar order will win. But the way it really works is that the American leadership, such as Henry Kissinger, they want that multipolar transition. But it's a transitional phase from the US to multipolar and then from multipolar to China. It is, the, it, is, it is how they plan for things, all right? Um, so it speaks of a regionalized blocks of nations like the EU and NAFTA. And I suppose you also have like the Islamic world nowadays and ASEAN, the Asian nations, under a world government, right? So they really keep aiming for that, the world government, to turn the whole world into their, into their farm and we will be their cattle. That's just not going to happen, by the way. It's, the German, I think, okay, let's write off 50% of white people. They are not going to do anything. The other 50%, given the right motivation, 
they will fight to the bitter end. You're going to find out why the Germanics and the Celtics fought the Roman Empire and defeated the Roman Empire. There's a reason for it. We don't accept slavery. Now, I think the urban leftists, the urban white leftists, they will accept slavery. But the rural white people, no, they would rather die than be a slave, right? All right, let me check the status of my video. All right, so do you think we can survive the next 100 years? Yes, our people will survive, but our nations will not, which is fine to me. They hate countries with traditional values. It's why they need Russia for the new world order, All right? Right, they hate traditional people because people who are like religious resistors who are unwilling to work just for money alone, but people who actually expect to have like a spiritual connection with what they're doing. Yeah, they cost economies money. So they hate the religious resistors. They hate people who, are, who say no to, to being a, a drone or a, just a tax, a tax number, right? What do I think about Russia? I think Putin is also a globalist, but I think the Western, the Russian people from Western Russia, the white people, the Christian white people, we could work with them to establish a power base in Northwest Eurasia that acts as a counterweight against the rest of the world that will become globalist and matriarchal. We would be like the patriarchal resistance in living in constant opposition to the matriarchy. But of course, we would come out on top of that. We would be a smaller group of maybe 500 million people who would dominate the other 7 billion. Like I said, it could be more of a global caste system with us on top. Why, why, what else? We're not going to submit to the Chinese. We're never going to do that. So, you know. Yeah, the Germans defeated the Romans at the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest and then later sacked Rome. Yeah, that happened, dude. It's called history. So... A major change of cycle is now ongoing. So for the past 500 years, the cabal, for the first time in the past 500 years, the cabal is now moving east under the shiny but false brand of the multipolar world order, right? While the still largely dormant USA and the rest of the West are steered into an abyss. You know, something that I always thought was really peculiar is in the, in the 2000s or so, our Dutch politicians slowly but gradually started to break down our military. Our defenses were underfunded and undercut, and basically it, it became a, 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 a laughing stock. And the same happened in Germany, and the same happened in France, and the same is happening to the USA. You have allowed your military to, militaries to be uh, dumped in disarray, if I say that right. And I think that is because um, the globalists want that multipolar order to, because that's the starting point for their world government. They don't want Western white men to ha even have the capacity to fight back against it. That's why they started to destroy our militaries from within by defunding our military, defunding the police. They don't want us to fight back. But then again, I think we can we can fight back with whatever we find in a hardware store. We don't necessarily need big rockets. You know, these people are going to regret fucking with us. So during previous hegemonic changes, meaning the change from Spain to Holland, from Holland to England, and then from England to the USA, wars were given, wars were always on the menu. And so it is now. The Western elites know that the East will take over the baton. You know, the elites want that, but I'm, I'm not a Western elite, and I disagree with those. We're not going to do that. We're not going to submit to China. I, I said so. Uh, but Macron and so on, and the Western leaders, they want this uh, because of the economic power that will shift to China. Uh, and so that both parties, China and the USA, agreed on a bloody theater war in Ukraine to dump their old hardware, to test their new weapons, to train Russia's armies, and to fill the pockets and the vaults to the brim. You know, Trudeau of Canada, he had a, a slip of the tongue. And the slip of the tongue is that Canada, a few, uh, Trudeau a few months ago said he wanted Russia to win. And then he corrected himself and said, oh, well, sorry, I mean Ukraine. I think they know this. All these leaders, the leaders even, 
they know what is really going on and what we're, what is really going on is uh, they're they're killing European and Russian men in a useless war so that we can then no longer fight back against the world government. Basically, they want us to shoot our load before uh, the bitch comes in. Yeah. yeah, it's fake. The whole war in Eastern Ukraine is just meant to kill people, but not really to do anything else. What we need is more intelligent leadership in Europe, uh, leadership from within. Our own people need to become more aware of what's going on in the world rather than worry about your next paycheck. You should be worrying about what's going to happen in the next century. Very few people do that. Hi, somebody's been a big fan of my content for a while. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Right? Okay, let's see if there's anything more to discuss about this here, because I thought it was very interesting. Yeah, so like I said, so I was, I've been reading a lot of quotes from an article written by this Dutch guy, Mace Meewis Bayern. I'll type his name in so that you know uh, what, who I'm talking about. Uh, Mies, Mies Bayern, we say Mace Bayern in Dutch. He uh, kind of figured out, yeah, there is a global small hat cabal. They are funding revolutions and wars. And they are behind the, the rise of nation states such as the USA. And now they bank, they also gladly bankrupt nations in order to free up capital, in order to fund even bigger operations such as uh, the world government that is next. I don't, I, and, and my, my point is that... Uh, I think we European types of people are going to figure out some way this century to become the opposing force to globalism. We will be their pain in the ass. They're not going to like it. <clears throat> and then he speaks of the second end game, which is the global digital prison. Again, I think the dig I don't believe in the, I'm not afraid of a digital prison. I understand they want to do what China does with the point score system. Uh, but what I think is going to happen is uh, the internet will collapse. We simply won't have the energy as in fuel to keep the internet up and running forever. It's going to fall apart, break, slow down. I mean, imagine the whole internet had a two second lag. It becomes useless, right? Or if the whole internet has uh, intermittent interruptions, unpredictable interruptions, it becomes useless. You can't use that. If, if the internet drops out for three days and you have to use the internet to, to buy food, people are immediately within three, by three days, they're going to switch to... Uh, clams and shells you know they're not going to use the internet anymore so the idea that you can build a digital prison and force everybody to pay using your digital points is nonsense because there are still clams and shells outside i can go i can go collect pine cones in the forest and use those to pay right so um i've been live for half an hour i'll stay another half hour so, all right, so the crisis of the West may become as severe as the one Russia suffered after the planned collapse of the Soviet Union, where male life expectancy at birth fell by six years. For sure, the cabal's century-long confidence game with the West's pseudo-democracies is now ending. A confidence game is a con, right? It's your fooling people. Uh, it's coming to an end, and the velvet glove is slowly but steadily being removed from the arch fascist, arch fascist fist. So the guy I'm reading, by the way, he uh, uh, he's probably a leftist, which is interesting because I agree with almost everything that he says here. Mm, I think his point of view is that he uh, he is also a sort of a yeah. That's the problem with me. My, my point of view is, in Europe, we have to have our multiple ethno-nationalist peoples who will work together, though, against global globalism, right? And I have no intention of fusing Europeans with Africans just for the sake of the worker revolution or something. No way. I don't want to do that at all. You know? Is it good to invest in stock or not? Well, if you know how to short a civilization, maybe. All right. Right, more people will use start using the dark web, right? But I think people will simply start using gold and silver coins, you know? All right. Oh, you're from the Benelux as well. Okay, cool.
All right. I don't understand really why the author speaks of the arch, fasc arch fascist fist. He thinks that this global Jewish cabal is somehow the fascist. I wouldn't even describe him that. I would describe him more as a totalitarian, right? It's not the same thing. I do agree, though, that the system of the past 500 years with uh, capitalist-funded nation-states is coming to an end, but that means we return to our religious tribal configurations, not at all some kind of global working class. No way. There's going to be more like a caste system in Europe. By the way, before capitalism, Europe had a caste system. We had the caste of the, uh, of the ruling class, you know, what do you have? You have the priest class, the warrior class, and the royalty, the kings and the nobility, right? So uh, nobility, warriors, and priests. Uh, that kind of cla class system always exists, but class is not the same as caste. The caste system is also going to be, in Europe, the unmixed people up top and the mixed and the browns below, just like in India. Yeah, I think we're going to see something looking like a, a feudal, uh, a feudal, a feudal caste system, right? But with our people on top in Europe, of course. Like we don't always have to care about the world. If we in Europe manage to feed ourselves and be physically healthy and have the weapons to defend ourselves, then we shouldn't have to care less about what the hell the rest of the world is doing. We can be perfectly isolationist in the sense that, well, sure, we'll do trade with you. But on, on our terms, we're not going to submit to anybody. This is an attitude thing. It's not at all true that, you know, a prisoner can still be more dominant than the guard. It's an attitude thing. And we're going to, what it, where, whichever side we're on, whether we're the prisoner or the guard in the future, we will be the more dominant one. That is my view, my view for, uh, for Europe. So this guy... The author I've been reading the whole time, he uh, has another article here saying China and Russia are the new horses for the globalist chariot. I see where he's going is that the globalist cabal wants to transfer the wealth of the USA to Russia and China, deliberately crashing, bankrupting the US so that they can then afford their new totalitarian system. Um, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. And it doesn't mean that we Europeans will go along with it. I have a totally different plan for Europeans. So uh, let's see if I, um, if I want to read all of this. Probably not all of it, but I want to go through uh, some of it. He mentions also the paradigm shift uh, or vis-a-vis -vis in, in relation to Israel. I did that video with Daniel Natal about the future of Israel, and we think that we thought that Israel is going to go down because the West is going to cut loose from Israel because it's no longer necessary, and China will prefer a Palestinian state in place of Israel. So that's interesting to see. All right. So you should get his book, though, The Predators Versus the People. So I get the impression that uh, the author I'm reading is, uh, is uh, how would you call it? How would you describe it? He's like a leftist or something in this sense. And I don't agree with that. Uh, I do agree with his rendition of history, but just not with the conclusions. We in Europe are going to carve out our own path, our own destiny. We're going to learn to stand up for ourselves after so many centuries of humiliation and exploitation by others, by the cabal, and humiliation by through immigration and diversity and our own politicians. I think the first thing that we're going to do next is we're going to figure out a way to string up our politicians and those traitors, those traitors living among us. No, the USA is not going to survive. I don't believe that, no. You're right, the last century has been one of pure humiliation. We've lost our place in the world stage. True, yeah. 
uh, we should have the place we need is a place where we become simply very dominant and willing to use force and aggression just to defend ourselves. I don't, I'm not interested in the rice fields of China. I'm not interested in the jungle of Africa. I am interested in our European territories. The United States of America are from fake dream to real nightmare. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I want to read more or just I'll just glance over it and then I'll just focus a bit more on your comments. So the, the cabal is preparing Russia for playing a leading role to take over the role of the USA together with China. How is that going to work out? You know, you're going to get this another uh, multiracial Islamized bullshit. This is not what we want. Like nobody talks about this possibility. Imagine this Northern Europe, including even Ireland, uh, Ukraine and uh, Western Russia, the white Christian people bring them together. All right. And we make a stand for ourselves in this damn forsaken world. That's how I see it, you know. So he talks about how Russia was already used to help destroy Germany. Why is Germany also always so crucial? Well, Germany is the heartland of Europe. Germany is where we have our uh, biggest industry. And so they're still, still to this day, afraid of, of Germany. That's why they blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. They're destroying German economy. They're destroying the German people with low quality, low IQ immigrants who are supposed to replace us. Why would they do that? Why are they so afraid of Germany? Because if Germany would take the lead over Northern Europe and if Germany would fuse with Western Russians, the white Western Russians, we would have the most powerful empire in human history. And they're terrified of it because it would be out of the control, out of reach of the cabal. Do you believe that a more centralized European market can stand on its own to feed? We can definitely feed ourselves. So that's not a problem. You know, and Ukraine happens to have the most valuable resources in its soil of any country in Europe anyway. Yeah, we could definitely get by for a long time while being very healthy and eating meat. A guy from Africa asked me what we eat in Europe. So I told him we just eat a lot of meat. <laughs> what do you eat? <laughs> You know, Henry Kissinger, the, glo the great strategist of the USA, he actually trained Putin. So that's why it's all interconnected at those, at those levels, you know. A strong Russia is needed for the, sh for the shift from West to East and that the war predicted by Fidel Castro would be the price for his and Russia's meteoric career. Right. Wow. OK. Yeah, it's all very extreme here. So the war in Ukraine is just a shit show to weaken Europe so that we could then transfer uh, the wealth and power from the US to China and Russia. Unless Europe does the unthinkable and become manages to become a sort of Christian Sparta, all right, a moral Sparta and be strong regardless of the globalist interests. I think we're going to mess with globalism so hard they will not see this coming, not see this coming. The, the, the European peoples, I think, have the potential to rise up, stand up for themselves and be that thorn in the eye, that pain in the ass that won't go away anymore. Uh, the globalist ass, right? So what do you think will happen to the white population if the USA collapses? They should come back to Europe because we're going to make a stand over here. Uh, what do you think of Brother Nathaniel? I don't know who that is. Uh, all right. All right. It's very interesting to see this point of view from this guy. I've been reading from him. Um, what I don't understand is why nobody absolutely nobody speaks about the proper self-interest of the european peoples they either say we're going to have to fund russia and china or BRICS is going to be in charge or the us is going to stay in power but nobody says wait a minute northwest eurasia is where the future power is really going to be it's going to be a german-led europe fused with the slavic world ukraine and western russia it will be a christian powerhouse a christian sparta 
you know, we could we could have our caste system and our class system. We're not going to do away with class distinctions. We're going to embrace them as, you know, as a way of strengthening ourselves, you know. What's the purpose of my life? My live stream here, I've just been discussing for the past three quarters, 45 minutes, I've been discussing uh, the transformation of the of the USA to the multipolar world. And uh, you can rewatch this on my YouTube channel at The Great Johannes. I will upload it later there. Am I pro-Palestinian? Why would I be pro-Palestinian? Look at me. You know, I I find it so absurd that you have to pick a side. I hope they all go extinct. I mean, well, I I am here to defend Europe. See, if you're for Palestine, you're good. If you're for Israel, you're good. But if you're for Europe, it's like, no, you can't be for Europe. Come on. Yeah, without Vatican rule, yeah, but I definitely see, uh, I see something in religion because it can strengthen people's, we're talking about normies, right? The normie people, they need something of a religion to know what they're supposed to do, what is expected of them in life, why they exist. Religion is supposed to inform people, why are you here, why do you exist? Well, us Europeans, we exist to be the bulwark against globalism for the next million years. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good goal the bulwark against globalism for the next million years. We're going to be these ethno-nationalist peoples with all their different languages, but with one shared purpose. Namely, we will not submit to globalism ever. <clears throat> right, right. Also, yeah, you can bring back European Americans to Europe, solve our labor shortages, yeah. Well, exactly. For every American that arrives, we can send back uh, Pajit and Ahmed, you know, or we can swap them out. Like Pajit and Ahmed can go to Europe, go to America, and then John and Bob can come back to Europe. Yeah, why not? Why not swap them out? It sounds like a real good deal to me. Now we have aging populations day two, so by the time our young people come together, we won't have an overpopulation. We will end up with a population of 400, 500 million less than we do now, so that will be okay, no problem. But they would be younger people. We would have the strength to do some very interesting things, namely we could simply dominate the world precisely because we have no real interest in places like China or India or Africa. So... What we do then is we simply impose our will. We we simply start to be we we start thinking like this. We European peoples are going to become extremely dominant, meaning culturally, mentally, psychologically, very, very dominant people. That means we don't need to go to war, but we will we'll, we will never allow people to trample us ever again, as they have done with multiculturalism and diversity. They squashed us, you know, they humiliated us. They're gonna get a payback out of this. They're gonna get a payback out of this. I think that that's fine. What we need is that religious revolution to um, fuse ourselves back together. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. All right, uh, I'm going to quit this now. So thank you for watching. You can uh, wait. This is my uh, my website is uh, jmk.info. It's a Substack newsletter, so you can subscribe there and uh, stay in the loop. I'm going to upload this to my Substack as well as to my uh, YouTube channel. Is going to, my YouTube channel is the Great Johannes, and then you could just go there. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I wish you all the best. And, uh, thanks for sharing and thanks for watching. Here, all right. <clears throat>